Let's begin by opening up the audio video settings window. You'll find this by going up to the Final Cut Pro HD dropdown. Click this area to see your dropdown options. Here you'll find listings for user preferences, system settings, and audio video settings, all of which are very important when trying to set up your movie or trying to troubleshoot a problem. Highlight and select audio video settings. You'll see a window with five different tabs, starting with the summary tab and ending with the AV devices tab. The summary tab is a very general window highlighting all of the audio video settings tabs. Let's select the sequence presets tab. By scrolling down, you'll see a number of different presets that were previously made by Final Cut Pro. There are a myriad of different sequence possibilities that are affected by things such as the format of the camera, perhaps mini DV or DV cam, or the broadcast standard being applied for, such as NTSC or PAL, the two broadcast standards of the world. These are things that you'll want to become familiar with on your own, but for the purpose of this exercise, we'll just begin by selecting DV NTSC 48 kHz, as it's probably the one many of you budding editors are going to be dealing with. It's basically the preset that allows for North American viewers to watch your piece on their television via DVD player. And it's the preset that many of you shooting video will use because you'll probably be shooting with a mini DV camera. You'll notice that a few of the presets have locks on them. Final Cut Pro will only allow you to edit their settings by making a copy of the preset. This is actually quite nice because you'll always have the original Final Cut Pro standard presets and can avoid ever permanently altering them. If you highlight and double click on one of the locked presets, such as DV NTSC 48 kHz, you'll get a window that pops up and reads, the selected preset is locked and cannot be modified. A copy will be made for editing. Simply hit the OK button and Final Cut will automatically make the copy of the preset for you. In the window that comes up, you'll be able to make adjustments in things such as the frame size, pixel aspect ratio, your editing time base, and both your QuickTime video settings and audio settings. Feel free to look through the various dropdowns of the different settings. Once you have made your selections, you would simply rename your setting by typing one in the name box. However, for this lesson, we're not going to actually create a sequence preset, as we'll be using the pre-made one for DV NTSC 48 kHz, so simply hit the cancel button to take us back to the earlier screen. Make sure that the DV NTSC 48 kHz preset is highlighted. You'll notice to the right of the presets area is an area called Summary. This basically does exactly what you might guess. It lists a summary of the various items within the preset that you selected. Let's move on to the Capture Presets tab. This is the audio video setting that deals with how you want to capture the footage that you have taken. You're basically telling the computer how you want to import and keep your footage. Again, feel free to click into the Capture Preset Editor window and have a look around. Remember, Final Cut won't allow you to even get to this screen before notifying you that it's going to make a copy of the preset, so you don't have to worry about messing anything up. When you're finished poking around, just hit the Cancel button to get safely out of the Capture Preset Editor window. We're going to again highlight the DV NTSC 48 kHz Capture Preset. Now, moving on to the Device Control Presets, you'll see seven options. The Firewire NTSC will probably be the one highlighted on your machine, as it's the one that most North Americans will be using. The device control preset is where you'll decide how you're importing and then using the footage that will start from your camera but end up on your computer. Most of you will be exporting your footage from a mini DV camera via a FireWire to your computer's hard drive, so just make sure that FireWire NTSC is highlighted before moving to the final audio video settings tab, which is the AV devices tab. This is also a tab that you can learn in your own time. For this course, we're simply going to use the dropdowns that Final Cut has already supplied us based on the earlier tabs that we have worked on and whether or not you had your FireWire device connected from your camera or deck to your computer when you opened up the program. For now, simply leave the video and audio dropdowns, which should read as Apple FireWire NTSC 720x480 and then FireWire DV. We have now finished going through the audio video settings window. To get out of it, we simply click the OK button located at the bottom right hand corner of the window.